Okay, Zucky, you just want to want to take it away? I do want to take it away, but actually, I think you would be the best person to talk about uh, what our plans for Lisbon are. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be in Lisbon from uh, October 25th to November 11th. Um, I'm speaking at the Cosmos Conference. Um, uh, I'm going to be talking about, you know, all kinds of cross-chain composability stuff that we are building um, and, you know, across the Cosmos. Um, but uh, what else have we got planned for Lisbon? Yeah, so um, on October 21st, there is a, a wine and beer boat party that we're hosting. So anyone who is already in Lisbon, uh, please come to this event. Um, you can find all the details on our website. Um, yeah, um, it's going to be fun. It's going to just going to be you know a chilled event with with drinks, uh, and you know all the other uh, Lisbon blockchain week attendees. And then the day after that is when the hackathon starts. So you know you can you can get in the mood of hacking. <laughs> so and uh, yeah, like like you said, the other events are. Um, uh, the Cosmos Conference itself, where you and Jack will be speaking, and uh, our event is going to be on the 3rd. Yeah. And I think we're going to have yeah. a second one, right? On the 6th as well. So we, we have a lot uh, a lot planned. This is this is why I wanted you to talk about it, because I have lost track of what's going on. So yes. I'm like, <laughs> Mario, no, yeah. tell me what's happening. The list of subjects seems to be like, more and more people keep showing up every day. I, I look at it. Uh, yes, yeah, I don't know yeah. whether or not the city of Lisbon is like fully prepared for the what is about to do, like, you know, that the blockchain people are coming, you know, basically this weekend and or like are already he there and ha are are not planning on leaving for 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 a month. Um, yeah, that's true. I, I, you know, mo most cities have you know tried to survive have only have to survive like a week of of the blockchain people, um, but. Uh, gonna be interesting to see um uh uh what was been is like i'm excited i'm very excited um new york was my first uh post pandemic uh, uh conference and that was a great time uh and uh I, you know it felt good it felt really good to see the community but this scale of this seems so much larger it's, it's, it's gonna be nuts um awesome um cool so uh any questions about uh Sommelier Lisbon plans. Anybody want to come up and talk about? Uh, are they going to be in Lisbon? Is anyone else, is anyone on this uh, on this chat uh, currently or going to be in Lisbon? Uh, anybody want to talk about uh, Lisbon stuff? Happy to take hands. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, Zaki, I, I don't know what you're going to be talking about in Lisbon, I'm thinking of doing a sort of past, present, and future of well, IBC. I you know what I'm going to be talking about in Lisbon? Um, um, uh, you know, I have vague ideas at this point. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about doing a past, present, and future of IBC and sort of talking about where we've come and, and what's next. Uh, I, I think that'll be fun, especially right after Terra enables. Um, what are your, I, I'd love to hear your sort of initial thoughts on that. Oh, what is the timing of Terra relative to when Lisbon is? Uh, Terra should... Because I guess there's a governance proposal. Yeah, so that should pass, I think, in about eight or ten days, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then they will have IBC. Okay. So that, that'll that enable, we'll have like a week or two of Terra IBC goodness. UST pools will exist, and uh, we'll be able to just kind of talk about the current state of IBC in a, in a really, uh, really interesting way, because this is something that, you know, you and I and a lot of folks throughout the cosmos have been really working towards uh, for years. Um, and, and now it's time to kind of take the next step past just token transfers into things like interchain accounts, um, cross-chain validation and other really, really exciting IBC stuff. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to talk about. Cool. Yeah. So, all right. What are your initial thoughts on, on topics for you? Um, so, you know, we've been talking a lot about this, like, idea, you know, we've been talking about, uh, you know, so, like, you have the basic concept of, like, what sommelier is. Um, but, you know, like, one of the ideas that I think we've been, we've been sort of talking about internally that I think I've gotten really excited about, it might be a, a good sort of thing to, like, you know, well, the two things that I have brewing are, one is, uh, you know, 
you know, this is not a sommelier topic, but it's a general cosmos topic, which is uh, the staking derivative work uh, has gotten um, has, has gotten a lot of is like I've been the momentum there has been has been picking up. Um, and so, you know, I just want to probably give an update uh, uh, on the staking derivative work um, on the um, on the on on the cosmos side. You know, one of the things that we have been sort of um, looking at for like a future direction of, uh, you know, a, of sort of innovative cosmos centric. You know, we have this like one category of sort of Ethereum centric sellers. Um, so sellers that are all about making, you know, Ethereum DeFi protocols better. Um, on the flip side of that, we have been exploring, you know, how can we enable, um, you know, Ethereum users to access Cosmos DeFi um, and this idea that has been percolating, which is osmosis sellers um, has been uh, has been like this idea of, uh, you know, essentially having a smart contract on Ethereum that you can get LP returns that you can LP onto Cosmos um, and take advantage of some of those, you know, bring more capital into um, the uh, osmosis LP pools and, you know, uh, give people who are basically, you know, most comfortable on Ethereum um, access to some of those, you know, sweet, sweet APYs that are available on osmosis and some of the other chains. Now, this sort of chains together a bunch of uh, fairly complex features on osmosis and on, uh, uh, you know, interchain accounts and IBC and, you know, sellers, but it like, it would be a really cool um, uh, uh, feature for the, for the Som chain. So we've been excited to, you know, I, I, that might be a cool thing to talk about. Yeah, you know, I think that one of the things that's really interesting about that kind of proposal is that it sort of opens a storefront for these various different DeFi protocols on a number of different chains and keeps all the liquidity in one place. Um, this is sort of the difference between, I guess, what people are talking about is cross-chain uh, versus interchain, where, you know, you see uh, people opening uh, separate instances of their DeFi protocols on things like Arbitrum. Um, but this is more keeping all the liquidity in one place and just offer, and opening storefronts on these various chains and, and using the, the sort of bridge piping to provide this really nice end user experience. Um, you know, this is really the world that Sommelier has been built for. And, um, you know, we've been working so long on this first seller's product that it's very Ethereum based. Uh, it, it's been really fun to kind of start talking about this Osmosis seller's product, especially now that we've all done a ton of work on Osmosis. Yeah. yeah. So these, these are the things that we might be talking about in Lisbon. Um, but, you know, who knows? It's like... Two and a half weeks away. So very, <laughs> very exciting. Um, so I think that the next big topic we have is SIPs, um, a, a very aptly named governance process, I believe. Yeah, I, uh, I congrats to uh, whoever came up with uh, the acronym. Uh, uh, so uh, we are talking about, um, you know, we are sort of bringing governance online. Um you know, whatever, you know, all of the future evolution of the protocol is going to happen by a governance uh, proposals. We're, tr we're, we're trying to get uh, to a state in which, you know, Kepler is working. Um, I know Jack's been, it, been battling that out. Um, but we are, uh, we, you know, whatever's going to happen next and more, most importantly, what is, the, what is the fate of this sort of 30% community pool allocation is going to start getting decided in governance um and that's going to be the way uh we're going to move going forward uh you know we're gonna you know what what comes from our our various teams is going to be proposed as governance proposals um and uh we are op we are certainly open to uh community input uh via the forum and anywhere else on uh how how we move forward um and uh but uh, that's that, that that's sort of the the next sort of big thing in the um in the sort of future of sommelier. Uh, and so we anticipate, and we know people are working on some uh, uh, fairly substantial uh, proposals for, for SIPs, um, and the initial sellers will be proposed as SIPs um, as soon as we just have all the, you know, the bugs work out and our end-to-end -end testing working. Yeah, you know, I think that this sort of speaks to the vision that you've always had for sommelier, which is really truly a DAO. Um, and, and, you know, there's a lot of discussion around DAOs on, on these different 
platforms, but it, people don't really talk about Cosmos chains and DAOs as DAOs in the same way, even though they really are. I mean, it's a token distribution that sort of ties together this diverse set of actors uh, and, and incentivizes them to kind of continue to build and grow this liquidity protocol. And a lot of the evolution of Sommelier as a protocol is going to happen in the open through this governance process. Um, you know, the DAO is going to hire different organizations to work on different pieces of the stack. It's it's going to uh, drive product direction. And we're really looking to, uh, you know, build Sommelier in the open through this DAO. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, you know, what we, what we are in the, in the process of is sort of engineering this transition from, you know, being, um, you know, we've, we've always been somewhat decentralized. You know, there's always been multiple entities working, uh, collaborating together in, uh, you know, from, from sort of pre-existing and like new, you know, entities that sort of operate in the greater cosmos. But, um, you know, the, the vision of the, the scale beyond, you know, me and my, me as the sort of organizing factor here, um, and, and to have, you know, multiple centers of, 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 of influence, um, and this was like part of the reason why, um, you know, a lot has left been left undetermined. Um, you know, I'm very passionate about, you know, a particular set of sellers, um, uh, you know, the Uniswap V3 sellers, I think, you know, trying to solve for concentrated liquidity. There's certain kinds of financial engineering and Ethereum DeFi that is just incredibly exciting to me. Um, but that doesn't mean that's all, you know, sommelier is going to do. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it it is a it is a big uh, it is a large tent, um, and the, with a protocol with many potential applications, and we want to continue to drive um, new applications under the protocol. Um, and we want you know I think like one of the trickiest things is going to be uh, what are the incentives for creating new sellers? Um, it's like something that people are um, excited about, and something that we need to have incentives around. Um, and, you know, I would like to have the first incentive sort of come out of governance proposals um, so that, you know, uh, <coughs> and that we build a pipeline for people uh, from the community to come in and propose a seller um, and then get it out, actually operationalized uh, and get rewarded for, for, for bringing that to the chain. And I think that that kind of really speaks to where we're going. Um, you know, Zaki, you, you tweeted the other day that Sommelier is sort of a prime brokerage for everyone else. Whereas, you know, there's these really sort of sophisticated financial companies in traditional finance that perform this role of prime brokerage where they're uh, providing really bespoke services to hedge funds and other high net worth uh, companies and individuals, um, where Sommelier is kind of trying to provide similar services where we're wrapping really complex instruments and, and providing them uh, to users, um, to everyone. Um, and, you know, with that kind of mandate and with what Zucky's talking about right here, um, one of the things that we've been talking a lot about lately, and this will be in a sip at some point soon, is adopting Cosm Wasm as a way to move much more quickly um, to allow many, many different people to utilize the pipes that we're building right now, you know, between the bridge to Ethereum, um, th that will soon be a bridge to Arbitrum and a bridge to Phantom and a bridge to uh, many of these other uh, EVM based chains uh, to allow, you know, liquidity to flow seamlessly throughout those with SOM kind of being the center of that. And the vision there is that the SOM token will take fees from all these various activities and that's going to kind of generate uh, the returns for holders. Was that fair enough? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are doing, uh, we are doing a considerable amount of R&D on Cosmosm and trying to look at what is a Cosmosm integrated gravity bridge look like? Um, where the basic idea is, you know, right now what we are building is, you know, native Go modules um, that drive sellers. Um, and what we're looking as a possibility is the ability to do Cosmosm contracts that drive sellers. Um, and so then you can essentially have, uh, you know, future SIPs that basically propose 
a new Cosmosm contract. Um, for security reasons, um, you know, you we're never going to be able to do fully permissionless um, Cosmosm contracts because um, essentially the way um, authority is partitioned on Gravity Bridge is that the ch- the that like anything from the chain has like full authority over uh, all of the tokens of the Gravity Bridge. Um, and so you want to make sure, so like we, we, we have to make sure that like, uh, we aren't uploading malicious, uh, we are not accepting malicious software into the system. Um, and that's going to be, I think, a, 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 a is going to be a, a trickier thing at like, you know, extreme scale, you know, thousands of sellers, um, uh, which is where we want to get to. And so we're going to have to do some security innovating around that, um, but you know, we I think we can we can confidently move forward with the sort of initial government governance gated uh, Cosmosm system, um, where SIPs for new sellers get proposed as Cosmosm contracts, uh, and are able to invoke um, uh, transactions on the gravity bridge. Yeah, and you know these things could end up being as complex as the Osmosis seller we were discussing. You know, using both the IBC bindings of the underlying sommelier chain, as well as the various gravity bridge bindings of those sommelier chains, and really offering a space for interchain DeFi um, in a way that doesn't really exist elsewhere. And, you know, this is what I I think Zaki and I are are both really excited um, that sommelier is going to bring. I see we've got a number of folks on the call today as well. So if if anyone would like to... uh, raise their hands and, and ask any questions. We do have some time for that. Um, Mario, uh, do you have any information on what the first SIPs that we're going to be pushing out are? Uh, no, I actually have not. <laughs> I, I assume yeah. what the, around the token and how to distribute it, if you ask me, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll be really exciting. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, I, I also think that we have a sort of SIPs, uh, like how-to SIPs proposal that we're going to put up, which sort of describes um, sort of what is the proper format for one of these and, and how we expect them to look moving forward. Um, so lots of exciting things there. Um, happy to answer any questions, uh, Carl. I see you in the audience. Thank you for joining again today. Appreciate it. Um, Justin also. Uh, Colin, uh, happy and Ryan, happy to answer any of those questions. Um, Maya as well. Hello. Um, so please just go ahead and raise the hand. Uh, yeah, Mario, the, what's up? Yeah, so real quick, won't the event on the on the third? Um, we have planned to uh, to uh, announce the first SIPs there, right? I believe so. Yeah. So that that will yeah. be uh, at the beginning of November. Uh, we will be announcing that. Um, so that that will be kind of. Uh, along with the Lisbon announcement, the, the, the Lisbon conference, which starts uh, that Friday. So uh, very, very excited. Lots of exciting stuff coming up. Yep. Well, if anybody has a question, we're still here. So feel free to ask. Um, raise your hands and uh, we take you on stage. This, this leads me to a place where I feel the necessity of filling some dead air. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, you know, I can kind of talk a little bit more about what I'm thinking for my talk in Lisbon. Uh, so with the theme of kind of past, present and future of IBC, I, I want to touch on some past things, things that design decisions that were made during the uh the sort of birth of IBC, things like uh, current relayer incentives. Um, Do, 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 add a speaker. Hey, Colin. Um, And things that were like relayer incentives, um, sort of where we are now, um, talk about the the sort of kind of astounding growth of the IBC network over the last few uh, weeks, especially. I I think we've had five or six new zones join, and uh, that number is only going to be increasing very, very soon. and then the future, uh, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of folks at the conference talking about shared security. So I'll, I'll probably only touch on that. Um, but one of the things that I do really want to discuss is a, a hobby horse of mine, which is uh, chain naming service and, and sort of how to uh, scale IBC user experience to include the next uh, 100 to 1,000 chains. So uh, really exciting stuff coming down the line there. 
Colin, uh, who has joined, recently joined as a new engineer at Sommelier, um, how are you doing this morning? And uh, welcome. Thanks. How are you guys doing? Good. Uh, I was just <laughs> going to point out, you know, we've got a giant Ethereum logo inside the Sommelier logo. What's going to happen when we're touching other chains? You know, I, I think I have seen some versions of the logo that, that wrap other logos. Um, you, you know, Sommelier is kind of this... Uh, ethereal uh, wave of liquidity that, that moves through the interchain um, and, and we will see this wave kind of wrap other logos as well. So looking forward to an osmosis wrapped logo. Um, I think that we have a version out there that is a Uniswap wrapped logo um, and, and many more of those to come. Uh, I believe we also have some NFTs that were minted uh, for some of our initial liquidity providers uh, using the pairings app. Um, of some of these different swooshes. Uh, hey. I really love the way those look. Let me see. It's going to be sick. Yeah. So, Colin, uh, maybe tell the folks a little bit about what you're working on and, and how your first couple of weeks at SOM have, have gone. Sure. Um, well, I'm relatively, well, completely new until this summer. <laughs> blockchain development um so i've just been kind of drinking from a fire hose learning what it looks like to build on ethereum what it looks like to develop this stuff in rust i'm primarily working with rust right now i've been working on a tool that allows us to and us in a dev environment and our validators to interact with sellers um and just today i put in two pull requests for that so it's been fun i'm really enjoying it yeah, that's a, you know, a, a really, really important piece of infrastructure that, that sort of knits together a number of different pieces of the stack. And, you know, I've just watched you, Colin, dive right in. And, uh, you know, you mentioned a few different crypto ecosystems. And I think for most folks, learning one is hard enough. But here at Sommelier, we ask you to learn multiple all at once. So uh, thank you for being so willing to do that. Um, also, Maya, thanks for joining us uh, up here. Did you have any questions today? Yeah, first of all, I wanted to say what an amazing job you guys have done on Sommelier. I think oh, thank what's you. really interesting is your approach um, that I think is very different than similar products, uh, especially considering the multi-chain um, ecosystem that we're kind of well, already in, actually. Um, yeah. and, I would, and I was wondering, uh, given... I mean, Zucky was mentioning SIPs and uh, security audits for different governance proposals and such. And I was wondering, I mean, it might seem unrelated, but how much of um, risk assessments are going to be taken both for, for governance and for um, various uh, uh, pools and tools within Sommelier? Yeah, you know, I think that's a great question, Maya. And uh, the, the answer that I have right now is like, that's not something we've thought a whole ton about. But one of the things that we have thought a lot about is uh, building out the data infrastructure. You know, we've been working really closely with our data science team to ensure that uh, the validators have all of the data that they need to make the right decisions. And I think that the first uh, step in really complex risk, risk management is getting that data um, and then figuring out how to take better actions on top of it. I know that as we develop this protocol, that's going to become increasingly important. Um, things like uh, liquidity caps on sellers uh, to, to make sure that there aren't any issues as we scale up. Um, and, and the foundation of that is going to be the data infrastructure that we're building right now. So thank you. Can I just follow up on that and ask? Yeah, please. Cool. So I was wondering how much of, are you guys already thinking about parallelization and how in terms of just computing all the various data points that you're going to have, that will fit into the infrastructure that you're building. Um, yeah, you, exactly. Go for it. No, no, you go for it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that my, uh, that's like one of the number one things on my mind. Um, you know, I, I really try to think like, what are going to be the huge blockers six months to a year out? And how do we start small projects now that, that knock those down so that when we get there, um, we're not in this place where there's a, a massive amount of processor contention in my brain. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, moving to a system like Cosmwasm, where, you know, there's a, a much more uh, 
concrete on-chain way for us to build these sellers um, as opposed to the current method with the Go modules that's very time intensive, very difficult to review in a lot of ways. Um, these will be much smaller snippets of code that touch and work with sort of known entities on the bridges. Um, and, you know, from the, uh, from the data side, uh, the goal is to bring as little as possible information on chain and to have the validators kind of bring that in. That allows us to parallelize the data layer um, in, in a very different way. Um, I think that one of the pieces we're going to end up needing to build, and I have a sketch for this in some notion somewhere, um, but it will be an on-chain registration for different data providers um, as well as incentivization for those data providers. So I, we, we are really thinking about parallelization at, at every layer of the stack and at each one of these uh, different pieces of infrastructure that we need to build to make this system happen. And, and you know, that, that kind of unblocks us six months to a year out as opposed to right now. But yeah, that's a great question. Saki, did you have anything to add there? So my, uh, my, hey, Zaki. my general, hey, how's it going? Um, All good. My, uh, my, are you coming to Lisbon? Yeah, I need to decide how I'm flying, but yeah. I'll yes. <laughs> Looking forward like to it's the last minute call, but you guys are gonna have to like invite me to stuff. Uh, yeah, no, you should definitely come we, to Lisbon. We got you. <laughs> um, the uh, the uh, um, the one of the things that Sommelier is really interested in is we are very interested in, and I think as many people, you know, many other teams are becoming interested in, is sort of like what are the performance limits now of the entire Cosmos stack. Um, you know, we have, um, you know, performance was uh, was a thing that we sort of intentionally uh, or like consciously were like, hey, we're not going to put a lot of energy into performance uh, pre-launch. Um, and, you know, put we put all our energy into getting IBC out the door. We put all our energy into getting proof of stake out the door. And performance was not exactly was not, you know, a, a top of mind issue. Um and now what we see is a lot more, um, a lot more demand on, um, you know, you know, the use of the Cosmos stack across multiple protocols. Um, and Sommelier really wants to be contributing and, and working with the rest of the Cosmos ecosystem to really, um, to really uh, sort of, uh, you know, figure out where all the different performance bottlenecks are in the Tendermint stack um, and the Cosmos stack. And there's so much room for improvement. Um, and there are things that like, you know, and so you want to, you, you know, some of this stuff is like sort of general purpose, you know, like there are limitations in the, um, in the tender, in the Cosmos stack around, you know, uh, you know, transaction propagation and block propagation um, and, you know, consensus improvements that can be sort of broadly applied probably across the entire Cosmos ecosystem. Um, we have this partnership that we are working on with Meisten Labs to bring some of the insights from, you know, the DM engineering team and, you know, that has like come out of that, that R&D effort um, into the Cosmos stack is another sort of big piece of, 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 of what we are trying to accomplish. Um, but, you know, on the flip on to, you know, again, rotate around um, uh, that, you know, there's also going to be like application specific stuff um, that we can do where we, you know, uh, can, you know, do sort of vote aggregation and transaction generation um, in parallel across like a number of different things. Um, and yeah, I mean, so the other thing is, you know, one of our, our sort of uh, sibling projects uh, on the Gravity Bridge is the UMI uh, protocol, and they are trying um, to run Gravity with a 200 validator set, um, uh, uh, 200 uh, validator validator set um, in their test net. And yeah, they've been coming. They've been coming to us with all kinds of, of of performance challenges that they're encountering, sort of trying to scale gravity that way. And you know, it's it's been fun working with them. Not just trying. I, I believe they are actually doing so. <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, uh, a lot of a, a lot of interesting issues though that are getting um, sort of percolated up from that. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, it's, it's, uh, I think one of my favorite parts about writing software is when people actually use it. And, uh, I remember Bez, uh, jumped in the gravity channel and he was like, yeah, so we've got a 200 test net, 200 validator test net going for this. And I was just like, 
wow. Uh, I'm glad someone's uh, testing it at this scale because that's pretty incredible. Yeah, awesome. I think we, we hit our time, unless every, anybody else has a question who wants to come up. If not, um, I would say let's, let's call it a, a day. <laughs> what do you guys think? Awesome. That sounds great. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Right, Mario? Yep. Let's do it. Let's all do right, it. Guys. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, for, thanks all for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye.